Hello everyone, my name is Griffin and we are back with another reaction video. We are once again reacting to Brett Cooper and this video is called Trans Men Debate Conservative Men on Masculinity. Now I'm sorry you, unless you are an actual biological man, you can't really say anything about masculinity because only biological men know masculinity because we are men. I'm sorry if you don't like that, but just like biological women can't comment on masculinity, biological men can't really say much on femininity. Because we're not women, we don't really know much about it. Let's hear what let's hear what these trans men have to say. You know, society is the problem and we're not allowing people to be who they are and that's why they're committing suicide, but maybe it has to do with the messaging that we're sending to these kids that you derive your value from if somebody oh. uses your correct pronoun or you derive your value if you can That's so good. Ah, that's such a good point. to another episode of Off the Clock. We're here with another Jubilee Middle Ground reaction. This video is from a while ago, but I never watched it. It has a ton of views. I'm excited to dive into it. We're going to be talking about whether or not masculinity is disappearing. This is trans men. So female to male presenting and then conservative men debating this. I really love this topic. I think we talk about the boy crisis a lot, rightfully so. We need to talk about a lack of masculinity because men truly do hold up a Western society, any society, in my opinion, like there's a reason why there are two sexes. We both bring different things to the table and men are shamed constantly. And I'm interested to see what they say. Before we get into it though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already and ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of these off the clocks or a daily episode of comment section. Masculinity is disappearing in America. Oh my God, it's Brandon Tatum. I think that masculinity is disappearing. I think that it's a concerted effort to emasculate men. Um, I think that some people feel threatened by masculinity and, and the, uh, the typical way that men carry themselves, um, leading families and different things like that. So I th I'd say it probably, it's a hard question to answer, but it, it kind of is disappearing because the larger part of society is Emasc like you said, emasculating a lot of uh, men for being men. We, like, men can't be men. We're seen as the enemy in almost every single light possible there is. And we're, we're being told that masculinity is toxic. And being a man is toxic. You know, all this sort of bullshit that is just not true at all. And yet... People now are more or less trying to hide masculinity because they don't want to deal with the arguments or being canceled or anything like this that this woke society is trying to is it, it's, it's horrible there's nothing in and of itself there's nothing wrong with masculinity we the the world needs both masculinity and femininity. It needs them both. There is nothing wrong with either one in and of themselves. And for one to start disappearing is not good for society as a whole. I think that there's a effort to mitigate uh, strong men in America. By the way, Brandon Tatum, he is an ex-police officer. He has a radio show now called, I think it's called The Tatum Report. He's amazing. If you don't know who he is, go check out his stuff. And his wife is also a badass and a good friend of mine. There's a few different ways to think about masculinity, but just looking at kind of the definition of the term 50 years ago, you had you know people like John Wayne, you had Martin Luther King, you had Sean Connery. You know, you think of like masculine features as in the beards, hairy chest, big muscles, being stoic, being brave, being rugged being a provider. Today you have, you know, people like Harry Styles and, and Timothy Chalamet. You have people that are completely contrary to what we were looking at back then. I also, I just want to pause really quickly because what I don't love, even though I know he's making a good point, is that when he brought up masculinity, the first thing he did were physical traits. And I want to be very clear, like you do not need to be the most masculine, rugged looking man 
to still have masculine traits. Like I totally reject the idea that in order to be a masculine man, you need to drive fast cars or some like super jacked up truck and smoke a bunch of cigars. Like especially with conservative dudes, it's like guys, it's not about how you look per se. Like obviously you should be in shape because that's just impressive in itself. Like you should take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. But it's not about those external features and how many cigars you smoke and what you wear and that kind of thing. It is about your values and how you treat people and your bravery and, and your steadfast and how unflappable you are. Like that to me is what makes somebody masculine. Like mentally strong, emotionally strong, able to be a provider, willing to lay his life on the line for somebody. Like that's masculinity. I don't care if you don't look like a John Wayne, that should not be the main point. Now, obviously I don't think that Timothy Chalamet and Harry Styles look like the most masculine men, but they also are not. We know that they don't have those values. So anyway, I just want to make that very clear. Cause I think that some people get caught up in like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it sucks when, when a large part of the society says that, look at those kind of men. It's like, that's how men should be. That's, that's, that's what the uh, standard of men is. It's like, no, no, it's not. That is a standard of feminine men. That is not a masculine man. They're not emotionally, psychologically, or physically masculine in any sense of the word. At least in my opinion, they're not. I, I, I agree with what Cooper is, is saying about masculinity. It's stoic. They need to be able to be a provider. Strong both in heart, mind, and body. You know, all, all this sort of stuff that she was saying, that, that is in part what a masculine man is. They don't necessarily, like she said, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, physically big, with you know, physically fit, you know, kind of like how these power lifters or these gym bros are. You don't need to have that kind of body to be a masculine man. You can be you know, thinner as well, but still have masculine traits in both mind and body. You just, you don't need to be, it's good to be physically fit. You should, it's healthy. It'll help you live a longer life and stave off any sort of other diseases that come with, you know, being very unhealthy. The Andrew Tate or like the normal conservative influencer dude that you see, like that's not actually what masculinity is, so. Those values of those masculine characteristics are, are completely devalued. I do believe that masculinity is going downhill, especially if you look at like um, the testosterone levels. Now the testosterone level for guys is- That's, that is actually something physically we should talk about. And maybe that does connect to, you know, the hairy chests and all of that stuff, but testosterone, and Michael Knowles talks about this all the time. Woo! Like, it's insane. And I chalk that up to all of the disgusting toxins we ingest on a daily basis, literally millions of them, how much porn men are watching, because we know that that has an impact on your testosterone and your hormone levels. That's a fact. It has a physical impact on you, not just mentally, all of it. That all has an impact on your testosterone. It, um, yes, porn. <laughs> all right. Porn is not, not completely evil or it's not completely bad, but, um, excessively watching it one or more times a day and you know dealing with yourself and if you do that too much you get so used to yourself that you have a harder time being able to feel pleasure from your partner because you're so used to yourself your body it just can't it, it can't climax or get any sort of pleasure from somebody else so I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with you watching porn or reading porn or whatever, but doing it doing it in excess is bad because you'll never really be able to derive pleasure from a partner. So, like everything in moderation. That's the thing. Everything in moderation. If you wanna, I, I'd say if you still wanna read or watch this stuff, do it maybe once a week or once every two weeks you know that's that's fine just don't do it every single day because that, that will have a very negative effect on your sexual life strong level so that is a physical change that is happening so maybe we do need to talk about the physical characteristics but i think the thing that i get so physical weirded characteristics out about is to the, a point. like driving fast cars i'm a dude's dude i'm so cool smoking all the cigars it's like oh my god hi i'm gilbert i'm 24 years old and i'm a conservative man with my beliefs and having a trans man as my friend, 
we don't really talk about politics. Someone being trans doesn't make me like them any less of a person. As far as pronouns, um, when referring to my friend, I don't really use the pronouns that my friend would want. I just say my friend or I say their name uh, just because I feel like I'm giving into the narrative that men can be women and women can be men if I use the pronouns that they want. All right. When it comes to the trans community, there is nothing wrong with wanting to uh, transition to the opposite sex. There's also nothing wrong with um, them wanting to be called the pronouns in which they identify with. That's fine. It, it, out of respect, you should call the person what they want to be called. Out of respect. Now, if they're going to be a complete annoying dick about it and be disrespectful about it and try and shove it down your fucking throat, then they have lost the ability for that other person to respect them to call them what they want. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. You want to be disrespectful? Deal with the consequences of being disrespectful, being a disrespectful little shit. Now, it, it's, it's, like I said, it's fine. I got nothing against trans people. I don't personally know any trans people. Uh, the only trans people I know are, you know, online or in shows or whatever. I don't in no one. Okay, no, never mind. Now that I think about it, I do know one. I, there is one that's at my work. You can obviously tell they're a trans person because their masculine traits outweigh their feminine ones. The only feminine traits that that person has is a pair of tits. But I got nothing against them. They, they wanted to transition. That's up to them. That's fine. Live your life how you see fit. As long as it doesn't infringe upon somebody else's life. Or as long as it doesn't hurt someone else, live your life how you want. You seem so nice. I do see that masculinity is under attack completely, but my definition of masculinity, like you said, has a lot to do with the traits that are associated with it. As a gay man, I, I mean, of all of us, you know, I mean, I'm not the most masculine man, but I do think that the good aspects of masculinity are definitely under attack, but I don't think that it's disappearing, it's just being channeled in different ways. It depends on how you look at it, it because a lot of the traits can also be embodied in women and, and femininity. So when we look at masculinity, I think that that we have to also look at what is the actual definition of femininity and masculinity. And if we're if we're defining masculinity by being stoic or muscles or body parts, then um, is it really masculinity? A lot of times when you guys spoke about masculinity, you associate it with men being manly, but I think more women are embracing their masculinity. Which isn't the best thing. Like, just because women are adopting it, just because we're swapping, that doesn't mean that it still exists in the way that it should. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is a reason why the two sexes exist. Like, we are supposed to balance each other. We are supposed to live in harmony. There are things women can do that men cannot do. Like, we are physically designed in a different way. Just swapping the characteristics, it's, it's just not how it's supposed to be. I don't know how else to say that. And yes, women can be more masculine. I would say I'm a more masculine woman than a lot of other more feminine women, but I'm still a woman. And I still have very, very feminine traits. And that's something that I've really worked on as I've gotten older because I didn't like a lot of feminine women when I was younger. I thought that it made women look weak. And it took me a long time to realize that those were all lies, that embracing your femininity and embracing something that's a little softer, embracing something that is more traditional, like it feels so much more natural. Letting a man take the lead, allowing men to be masculine, that feels right. And obviously I can still be a strong, empowered woman and understand that. Masculinity is still there. I mean, just other genders are using it. Being courageous, being powerful, more women are standing in their power, which is again associated with masculine, but it's not. In the majority, at least in my opinion, you know, first of all, let me say, if, you, if a woman wants to be masculine, you know, by all means, go right ahead and do it. It's your choice, like I said, live your life how you want, as long as you're not infringing on other people's lives or hurting other people. Now, the majority of these masculine women are probably more annoying than anything else because they make their masculinity and their independence and their so-called girl power boss or whatever sort of dumbass shit they make that their whole fucking personality and then they're just screaming into high heaven and annoying everyone else around them 
but if you want to be masculine, go right ahead. There, there is a way for a woman to have some masculinity and still be very attractive, at least in my opinion. Tomboys. That's basically what they are. Tomboys. That's basically what a masculine woman who still has femininity is, in my opinion. It's a tomboy. Not specific to just men. Women are no longer submissive. They're dominant. Women don't need men, and I think that most of them... That's one thing that is not true. Saying women don't need men. Yes. Yes, you do. Women need men. Men need women. Now, the thing that differs is, and they've, they've seen this in actual life, aside, aside from procreation to keep humanity going, if all women disappeared off the face of the earth, aside from procreation, men would be fine. We would. We would be fine. Because the majority of things that keep the world going is held up by men. Now, if all men were to disappear, aside from procreation, it's, it's not nice to say, but the world wouldn't be going on for very long if it was only women and there were no men. It's, it, it sucks to say that, but it's just true. I mean, they, they even had, um, they had both sexes go to an island to survive on just the land. Now within, I think it was one or two days, they had to rescue the women. Because they, they didn't form any sort of structure to, you know, uh, help survive they didn't try and work together to get food build shelter or anything whereas the men they were having <laughs> funny enough they were having the time of their lives so saying that in general saying that one sex doesn't need the other is logically and factually untrue men need women women need men if you say that women don't need men, then you are just factually and logically wrong. America's realizing that anyone can be powerful on their own. That's true. Anybody can be powerful in their own right, and they should be. I'm not saying that women should be totally submissive and be a doormat. That's not any way to live your life. Do not be a doormat ever. Be in control of your life. But just saying, oh, it doesn't matter what men are anymore because women are handling it. Do you not understand how wrong that sounds? The, the other the other thing that a lot of people don't understand with uh, submission and freaking back in the chair submission isn't as what a lot of people think it is when when someone says being submissive they think of subservience they think of the person being giving up all their rights and everything and being a slave to the person no, that's that's not what it means. Like let, let's look in sort of um, a DS relationship, a dom sub relationship. When it comes to the sub, the submissive person, in that sort of relationship, the submissive has more power than the dominant does because without the um, without the okay, without the consent or anything from the person who is submitting, the person who is the dominant one can't do anything without getting into legal trouble because unless the person who is a sub says y you can dominate me it's okay and everything the dom can't do anything because at that point if the dom does something without the sub giving any sort of consent it is seen as abuse and it can be seen as um, rape it can be seen as all that stuff now if if dominant and in control then everything is fine people seem to not understand that the sub when when the person is being submissive they're giving power to the person the person is being submissive has all the power and they are willingly giving it to their partner 
and now the sub can just as easily take that power back away. Now when a lot of guys are wanting the woman to be submissive, they're not asking them to be subservient. They're not asking them to be their slave, their servant. They're not asking that, no. They're asking them to basically trust in their judgment and listen to their judgment because they, most of the time, if the person is logically thinking, they know what they're talking about. They're trying to protect and lead and keep safe the person that they are being dominant over. That's how this stuff works. That's what a lot of these people don't understand when they hear uh, the men asking the woman to be submissive to them. So you got to think on that a little more. Like I said, we're not asking them to be slaves. We're not to be subservience or servants or anything. We're just, it's, it's not that complicated. I believe that the masculine traits are inherently in men and men have to take a position. You made a really good point by saying women are now becoming more masculine. They feel as if they don't need men, which I think is the problem here. Um, I think that the way we've been designed by God, in my opinion, is that men are to lead, men are to be strong, men are to be brave. Men have to take their rightful position. The way our country has been um, structured to this point have been because of strong men who have taken a stand, who have fought wars. Now I feel like it's getting so lopsided that our families are degrading. People don't know where they're at in this country. Now in 2022, masculinity is being redefined. And I think what happens is people get upset when things start to change. No, I think that nobody ever wants to take that away from men. I think that what we want to do in the world now is start to understand what is masculinity. And it's always been really associated with this very machismo space. And now there's different kinds of men in the world. There's not just biological men. There's also trans men or people who, def who want to be masculine. So the I think what's happening now is people are pushing against change because mm -hmm. change is scary and people don't understand. And so I think men, biological men, feel under attack when I think that's not what's happening here. The point that you made is 100% is, is correct. There are different phases and people are experiencing in different ways. The feminist movement is, I think they are attacking masculinity within men. I, I don't want a man to open the door for me. I don't need a man in my life. I can do all of these different things. He's what so they're doing is attacking men and that's what's causing the problem. What? <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, there's nothing wrong with the feminist movement. At least the first and the second generation feminists, there was nothing wrong. They, they did every, they, they fought for women to have what they have today. Now, what's wrong with the feminist movement now is the current generation, is the third and current, I don't know if there's a fourth generation yet, but the third generation and what it is now is the problem. They have basically done a disservice to the feminist movement. They have completely hijacked it and just eviscerated what the uh, feminist movement stood for and what it did. What it did was they gave the women the ability to go out and have a job and possibly become the breadwinner of the family. And they also gave them the ability to vote, which at the time most of women didn't want to vote because it came with the stipulation of being drafted to the military. Now, over time, women became exempt from that, which I think is highly unfair, but you know, they got what they got, so they're able to vote. Now, the current um, feminist movement, I honestly, I don't know what they're fighting for. I really don't. Women have the same rights and abilities as men do when it comes to society and working. So, I, wh what, what are they fighting for now? They're, at this point, they're just trying to, for one, emasculate men because they don't like the masculine man. They think masculinity is toxic, and they came up with this dumbass... Uh, phrase toxic masculinity which is not an actual thing the current feminist movement is just a bunch of whiny ass woke people whining at the world because they don't, it, the world doesn't go how they want it to go what part of the feminist group feels like it's attacking because I know that most feminism is like wanting equal pay or oh my god it's <laughs> 
Ah, the pay gap. The forever argument that never ends. There's no such thing as a wage gap. It doesn't exist. At least in the way that the feminist movie wants you to believe it does. It's... It just doesn't. It is all boiled down to choice. That's it. See, we literally just reacted to a video yesterday. Was it yesterday, Bobby? Or late last week? About International Women's Day. It was a man on the street type video. And this guy was asking women at a International Women's Day rally in Amsterdam, what does feminism really mean? They literally could not give a definition. If feminism was actually equality for the sexes, I would be 100% on board. I would still call myself a feminist. But what this person is saying right here is not actually how feminism operates in the modern world. That is the definition of feminism, of like second and first wave feminism. But in third wave feminism, they literally acknowledge it means everything and any anybody can be a feminist, anybody can be part of the feminist movement. It's all encompassing. It's so intersectional. Everybody needs to be part of it. That's not about equality of the sexes. And the reason why they are doing that and why they are changing the definition and how feminism operates in the world is because we have achieved this equality. There is nothing that I cannot do as a woman that a man can do. You just said that women not needing men is somehow empowering. You know, having a man is somehow less empowering or being an individual is somehow less But that's how women feel. Right? Women actually are saying that because that's how they feel. It you know, I want to say this. This is nothing to do with this, but it when it comes to trans, it really is amazing how much they don't look like the sex they were born in like look 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 at look at these look at these three right here like this this guy right here i can't remember his name you could not tell that he was once a woman especially with the voice he has it it is amazing how how his voice sounds so much like a man you cannot tell he was a woman it's the same thing with these two. I mean, he just looks like some sort of pretty boy from, you know, a boy band. And him, it's just, you, you can't tell. It is, technology is fucking amazing. It really is. It is it is amazing how you can transition from one sex to the other and you would not be able to tell that you were the sex you were born. It, 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 it amazes me. And there there's probably going to be a day that comes where we are able to biologically transition from one sex to the other where a man can become a woman in every sense of the way and they can have a uterus and actually have babies i i guarantee you one day that will happen our technology will reach that point i'll probably be dead at that time because that that technology is probably far fucking off because biologically it's not possible for a man to transition to a woman or a woman transition to a man physically it is possible physically yes biologically no because a man does not have a uterus we are not biologically built to have one and to produce eggs and women are not biologically built to have testicles or produce sperm but i guarantee you probably one day it will happen and it will be amazing probably be expensive as all fuck but it will be amazing technology is it, it is an amazing thing it's but that's not how every woman feels but that, no one's saying every woman they're only women. women speak for themselves so right. you, all of you are going to have different opinions as biological men absolutely women all have different opinions oh you see a very specific group of women but, saying this. let me just you just you did just say that's how women feel so are you speaking on behalf of all no women? no i no i'm not let me take that back so, the women who are saying that feel that way why do you feel that women in general feel disempowered do no i don't think in general no 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 that's a generalized statement i can't you can't say that i said well, the women one, no i did not i said the women who say that you associate <laughs> somehow no, women are now embracing masculinity which means that they are now more empowered because they don't need they don't a man, need a man or right. when, with, men feel empowered when women need but them. i don't think that in, women's empowerment comes from having a man or not having a man so why is it always I don't think men feel really more empowered when a woman is, needs them. Now, I can't speak on all men. I can't. I'm just saying I think I I don't think men feel more empowered 
when a woman is dependent or needs him. It, it probably feels nice. Don't get me wrong. It probably feels nice that you, you are wanted, you are uh, providing, but I don't, I don't think we feel more empowered when, uh, when we have someone like that. I think um, as men, we feel more empowered when we are able to provide for ourselves and those around us. We are more empowered when we are able to have a good high paying job where we can sustain ourselves. When we have our own place, we have, we are able to afford our own stuff without having help from somebody else. At least I would, I would, I would love to be, I would feel so more empowered if I was able to buy my own place and my own car and all this stuff without having to ask my father or my mother for help. I will one day. I mean, I just recently got a raise in my job, so, you know, but yeah. He's associated that, yep. uh, you know, a woman's now empowered because she doesn't need a man. A, a woman has always been empowered. Women have never been, but they've never it, felt that's that. That's not true. Empowered. I that's mean, if we true. go back to the 1920s, <laughs> if you're going to do that, but that's not what but we're talking about. We're have... talking about society right now. Right now, you actually think women are empowered right now? Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. Nowadays, women have more power, more freedom, more choice than in any other time in history. More women graduate from college than any man by, I think it's 15, 20%, I think. Maybe a little less than 20%. I, I'm not sure. It's somewhere around there. More women have high, have, uh, I think more women have high pink jobs. And, and, you know... Like obviously, I said, women end up out earning a lot of men. Women have more choice in what they want to do. Women can do what they want to do. And just women have so much more choice and power nowadays, especially when it comes to the dating and sex world. Yes, they have all the fucking power in the world. Women are empowered. Who's the vice president? And how long did it take for her to become a vice president? Oh my God, Kamala is not the beacon of feminism and empowerment. That is offensive to say that I only became empowered when I saw myself represented in government. I don't need a man to be empowered and I don't need to see myself represented to be empowered. I can be empowered as an individual. I can be empowered because I stand strong in my beliefs because I don't take shit from people. I can be empowered because I know who I am and I'm confident in that. That is what empowerment means because I believe that I am in control of my life, and if I work hard and I give it my all, that I can make things happen. I'm not a victim, I'm not oppressed. That's a mindset. There is a right and wrong way to be a man. Take a second to think about it. Hmm. <laughs> He's like, fuck it. <laughs> I hope this is that biological. When I originally heard the question being asked, I didn't agree with it, but men are not abusive individuals right. men are not to be cowards right. men are to lead their families and men who do not display that i don't believe that they are men in my opinion right. and all of the qualities that i see in my father is what i believe a man should be all of those characteristics are what make a man and when i see a man be a coward in the truth and in, in, in just speaking the truth or um sticking up for what's right especially today in america with everything going on i'm like those are not men. My name is Clarkson. It is it is a thought provoking question. There is a right. Is there a right and a wrong way to be a man? I think there is both a right and a wrong way to be a man. It, it is it is a very thought provoking question. The wrong way to be a man is those you'd see in like abusive relationships. Those who try and assert dominance to a point where they they don't take any opinions they don't take any sort of help or anything in a way they just they have to be in control it's either your way or the highway no questions what's fucking ever i i don't think that's a good way to be a man a man this is a good way to be a good way to be a man is a man who knows how to be a leader but also knows how to take the opinions and other things of other people around him those who, uh, a man who knows how to protect without being overprotective and, you know, you know, just overpowering. It's, it's hard to describe, but it is a good question. I'm 24 years old and I'm a conservative man. My biggest question for the other side 
really is, are you happy? Anybody that wants to fundamentally change society and change gender roles, to me, that, that's not happiness. Are you happy? Oh, that question. That is a big one for a lot of people. Are you happy? I mean, really, really. Are you truly happy? That is, that is a question that gets a lot of people. Because a lot of people don't take the question seriously. They take it as a joke and just say, yeah, I'm happy. They're like, no. Are you happy? Truly. Are you happy? You have to, you have to get them to take the question seriously. Because if you don't, they see it as a joke and they'll just say, yeah, I'm happy. That's fine. And they'll just move on with their day. It is, it's a very emotional and difficult question to answer. And if, if we want to fight for acceptance, we need to start with acceptance, which is accepting society for what it is. God, that is, I love that his question would be, are you happy? I had somebody on one of my all access lives, those are the live streams I do every Monday. They asked me, if you saw Dylan Mulvaney in the street, like what would you ask, what would you say? And I don't really think I had an answer for the question, but I did say that I would speak to Dylan Mulvaney if I had the chance because I think it would be an interesting conversation and also just to be kind but I think that would be a really interesting question like are you actually happy with everything that you are doing whether it's you know one individual or this entire side that's trying to have this revolution that is fundamentally like Clarkson said trying to shift society on its head flip all of the gender roles it's like why at the end of the day we're all men <laughs> okay buddy I don't believe there's any any wrong way to Okay, it's, it's people like this, you can sort of still tell that they were a woman. But, uh, yeah, they did a pretty good job with him. Be a man. We're just redefining what it means to be a man. But there are things that naturally come to men. So when you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just Biologically. like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just redefining what it is to be a man. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking about. But, but why do you there think is... it has to stay the same? I'm yeah. sorry. Why do we need to have the same thing for hundreds and hundreds of years? Do you not see? Because it works. Because tradition means something. It's not. Why fix something if it's, if it, if it's worked for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years? Why change the one thing that has worked in kept working throughout the entirety of human history why change it now because it doesn't fit your narrative because it it it, it inconveniences just you no don't try and redefine what a man is just because you see it as inconvenient not just because i care about oh the classics and oh everything needs to stay the same because that's how it should be no it it's I'm very not traditional in many, many ways, but in things like this, there's a purpose for it. Even if you're, you know, not religious, you don't want to talk about that, but like scientifically, biologically, there is a reason why we are created and situated the way that we are. State it's not the same thing. It's just, just it's said. keeping the same qualities. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect. It's, no. and it's been led by men like throughout all of history and look where it's gone. Yeah, and it's been sidetracked by angry women. You want to talk about that? Gibby. So, you're, you know, we're talking about redesigning what it means to be a man. So what do you want to bring to traditional men? I think it's embracing that you can be vulnerable. I think that a lot of men want to portray strength, strength, strength. But men are people, and I know that men have feelings. Being a man and masculinity, those are two different things. And I believe that we can redefine whatever that means to anybody by including other types of men or other types of masculinity. I myself am a father, I have a child. Some people would disagree with me being a father because I am transgender. But that being said, I present to the world as male, my child sees me as a man. There's proper ways to be vulnerable, right? You don't have to break down in front of your family and cry. The vulnerability thing is so funny to me. They always go back to that. Like, well, men are too stoic. Like, they need to be vulnerable. Like, I'm actually trying to think of like the guys that I've known throughout my life. And I cannot think of one that was so, so stoic that he never showed like a human side and was actually vulnerable. Like, it's just kind of a mute point. 
maybe a hundred years ago, it was a totally different thing. And, you know, maybe men were more abusive. They took out their anger on women. They were much more stoic. But I do think we have progressed in a healthy way where men can talk about their feelings. And I'm not meaning in like a mushy, gushy, like whatever, unless you want to. I don't really care. But where you can communicate effectively with your partner or with your family or your friends so that you can be healthy and have a good relationship. Strong man. It's, it's hard for a lot of men to show vulnerability. Reason being is because a lot of the times when a man does show vulnerability, when he cries, when he talks about his feelings, more often than not, like if he does it with his, with his partner, his girlfriend, his fiance, his wife, or whatever she is at the time to him, more often than not, it gets used against him in some sort of way or he gets emasculated because of it. That is the reason why a lot of guys will not show their vulnerability to their partner. They'll show it to their the people whom they trust the most, their closest friends who they know for a fact won't tear them down for it or use it against them. They'll bring it to a family member like a brother or sister, mother or father because it's their family and they trust them. They won't bring it to their significant other because of the experience that it has been used against him by other significant others. Now, there are some significant others that men can talk to because they have shown and they have proven that they will not do that. Now, there's a small minority, but, you know, if you want to be the person that he can come to and be vulnerable with, you have to show him that you will not betray him. Because once you do, if you betray him, even in the smallest way when it comes to him being vulnerable and crying and talking about this stuff, if you betray him in any small way, you will never see it again. He will never, ever talk to you again about him being vulnerable. That's the price you have to pay. I believe exude the qualities that you guys are referring to. I think the problem is overcorrection, right? Some people believe that men need to cry and lay on the ground and be feminine like women. My name is Brandon. I'm 34 years old and I'm a conservative man. I had a lot of curiosities about what it's like to be a person who believes that they're a trans man. You know, I feel like God has created all of us very uniquely. And although I have beliefs and I follow the Bible to the T, I still want to know from other people of what their experiences are. It doesn't mean I have to agree, but I really want so to know so what good. other people are feeling from the person who's experiencing it real time. Children should be allowed to transition. Oh, no, frick no. no. Fuck no, 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 don't, no, no. There is at a certain age where you can start talking about it and everything. You leave the kid, you leave kids the fuck alone. Let kids be kids. Like if, if I had a kid who wanted to transition, you know, I would, I would support them, but I would tell them if you want to transition, you save up the money yourself. And when you're 18, you can do it. I will not pay for my kid to transition. I will, I will support him and everything, but I won't pay for it because he has to pay for it himself. He has to make the decision that this is what he wants. If this is what he or she wants, then he will pay for it. And later on down the line, if he doesn't want to do it anymore, then that that is the mistake that he made. I will not make that decision for him or her. When they are 18, they should be allowed to do it because they are legally an adult. And they should have to pay for it themselves. Because when they're 18, they have to learn the consequences of their decision. And that decision is a very, very heavy one that comes with very, very heavy consequences. Leave kids the fuck alone. I was gonna say, I find it very interesting that you and I are the only ones that stepped up, especially since we're younger. And You should allow children to feel what they feel because mm. I felt the way that I felt for as long as I can remember and it's something that I cannot deny. Yeah. You know, although my mother is supportive, when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to wear boys clothes because that wasn't right now i know we're talking about transitioning it doesn't always have to be hormones it's like 
transitioning in society, so being able to dress more masculine. Yeah. Um, I did when I was younger, but as I got into middle school, kids change, people are mean, so yeah. you know, I dressed how I would in society, so I dressed like a girl, whatever, but I think that children should be allowed to express themselves in whatever way makes them feel comfortable. Yeah. Now there, there's, there, I, I pause this thing, I'm cheated. There's the thing. Now, when it, when it comes to the medical stuff, leave kids alone. If, if kids want to dress, you know, in a dress, like if, if a boy wants to go and you know, dress up as a girl, that's fine, let, let him do that. And vice versa. You know, they're called tom girls and tom boys. That's just how they are. Oh, sorry. It's just, I think it's about 80 to 90% of the time, they'll eventually grow out of it. They're kids. Let them be what they want. Let them do what they want I, to an extent. But 80 to 90% of the time, they'll grow out of it. They'll go back to being a, a woman or a man. It's just how the mind works. They're, they're exploring. They want to, they're curious. It's just how kids are. But let kids be kids. Let them figure stuff out. Yes, children should be able to express themselves. But that doesn't mean that they should be fed lies about the fact that they can change their gender. That does not mean the parents should affirm bad thoughts that are not rooted in reality. Harmful thoughts. If your kid is genuinely so upset, so distraught, struggling with their gender to the point that they need to socially transition, that means that you as the parent need to figure out what the hell is going on. But if your kid is just, you know, like me when I was younger and was more tomboyish, then let them do whatever. If they wanna wear overalls, if they wanna wear, who cares? Overalls. But if they are expressing gender dysphoria and what, I need to transition, I'm nine years old, like I'm not, I'm not a, like, then you need to have a much bigger conversation. So I get, what he's saying about just like socially transitioning, he's not even talking about hormones yet, but I think that there's kind of like two categories of just like expressing yourself as a unique individual with a you know unique personality and interest in a lot of different things. Maybe you're not the quintessential girl or boy and you have other interests. And then the other bucket is, you know, having something that is so wrong that you're working through that you think you need to transition. And like that actually needs to be addressed and should not be affirmed in a child. Kids are struggling to be who they are and they're, there's more rates of suicide for trans individuals because they're like, there's literally being laws put in place to prevent them from being who they are. And that's, that's not the reason. The reason is because for many cases, transgenderism is a symptom of another problem. When you talk to people who are transgender, when you you know listen to their stories, it's like, oh, you know, I, you know, I've transitioned and this, and I also have depression and major like bipolar disorder and all of this stuff. And it's like, obviously I'm not saying that everybody here is mentally ill, but it's like, there's usually a, a root issue that needs to be addressed. And that's what I was meaning with that other bucket of like, you need to work with your kid on that. Don't just affirm this because usually it means that there's something else there. Okay. There was one trans man who was speaking to uh, an interviewer for a video that they were doing. And he even said he, he, he highly does not recommend for anybody to go through this. Because the, the rates of suicide for trans people is very high. It is. Now, the reason that is because a, a lot of mental imbalance that they have. That they have not been able to get help. They, have, they haven't decided to get help. And it also comes with a lot of the medical stuff that they have gone through that has, from what I've heard, is very excruciating and painful. And they have to deal with that on a daily basis. And sometimes those people can't deal with that pain. And they think their only way out is to off themselves. Now, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not because of what this dumbass kid is saying. But it's the th trans... Going into transition, to transition from a man to a woman or a woman to man, comes with high, high consequences. It is a very, very big decision, especially if you get bottom surgery. That is one thing. If you're going to do that, you, you should take at least a year or more to think about it. Because once that is done, there is no going back. Especially if, 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 a man, if a man is transitioning to a woman. Once that is done, it's done. You, you cannot go back. So if, 
if you are thinking of transitioning, please make sure this is absolutely what you want because this comes with a lot of risks, both mentally and physically and emotionally. And it comes with a lot of consequences if you are not prepared to deal with them. So I work with children. This is where I have like the biggest problem with the trans stuff is with the children because they, people like, I'm sure you guys would agree, you wanna inject them with the hormones to stop their puberty, their normal puberty. They haven't even developed the prefrontal cortex yet and you wanna stop their natural puberty from occurring to affirm their gender. And then later on they regret it. I think that's, um, not a good thing. See, that's why this is a loaded question, because transition can mean many things for children. Now, I totally, as a transsexual person, disagree with giving children hormone blockers, Excellent. medication, surgery, but what I do agree with is socially transition. Why did you put in this crap from Greg Abbott? There's, he's not even talking about Greg Abbott. You just threw that in there for some kind of like hit. Texas Governor Greg Abbott called for medical treatments for transgender teens to be classified as child abuse. Obviously, that's written in a very soft and like loaded way. But I do think that medically transitioning people before they are fully developed, before they actually can make the decision by themselves, before they literally are legal adults, I would agree with that. I don't. Just so you know, for people who don't know, mentally, we don't stop growing until I think it's around 25. That's when we are f biologically, uh, our brains are biologically fully developed is I think it's by 25. See why, <laughs> I don't see why that's some controversial statement. Obviously the New York Times is a bias and is gonna write it in that direction. I also don't know why Jubilee felt the need to just put that in here for no reason. Which means why, cause I did that, okay? And I did that in the 60s and 70s. My parents dressed me like Buck, I was a boy. You know, I didn't have any problems because I just lived, we used to call it a tomboy, right? So that was totally- uh, Why do you put tomboy in quotations? That is a tomboy. And I went through puberty and- Oh my God, they're saying those, the quiet part out loud. That used to be called a tomboy. You're admitting- It's still You're admitting now that if you're a tomboy, people are gonna be like, oh, is your, is your daughter trans? Why is Tom, why is being a tomboy now this like outdated thing? God, this world's upside down. I did all the things. I do not believe children can make those choices and I do not believe it's okay yep. and ethical for a parent to make those choices yes. for a child. But I do believe gender dysphoria exists in children. I had it, 100% it's there. But to give medication to a child is so unethical to me yep. that you would actually, you're exactly what you said, you're stunting brain growth, you're stunting all of these things. I appreciate the fact that Buck is talking about this and is actually using the term gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is something that does exist. It is something that psychologists have known about for a very long time. It was a very limited number of people, but it was a mental condition. It is real. It exists. We don't need to debate that. We can debate the extent to which it exists, but it's a real thing. But so often now people aren't using gender dysphoria. That's like an outdated term because now this is not something that needs to be fixed. It just needs to be affirmed. You don't have gender dysphoria. You believe that you are biologically a man. Transitioning medically for children is not okay for me, but I do believe in a social space. When you say a social transition, mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because we can't control what happens in a social situation. That's right. That's right. So to me, and we talk about suicide rates mm -hmm. among young trans people, mm -hmm. this whole ideology is telling people to derive their value off of what somebody else is saying about them That's or what right. somebody else affirms to them. So we, we'd say that, you know, society is the problem and we're not allowing people to be who they are and that's why they're committing suicide. But maybe it has to do with the messaging that we're sending to these kids that you derive your value from if somebody oh. uses your correct pronoun or you derive your value if you can. That's so good. That's so good. I mean, that goes back to everything of like raising kids to be perpetual victims, to be constantly focused about what other people think. I've talked about this in the context of homeschooling, but I'm so grateful that I was homeschooled because I did not care what other people think. I was not in like the, the fifth grade soup, you know, where everybody was dealing with peer pressure and there were all these kids. I was trying to be like them. That just wasn't part of my world. I was just Brett. I just did what I was interested in. I was just me. And then when I got older and, you know, I went into the real world, I wasn't feeling any of that pressure because I didn't derive my worth from other people because I didn't, I was not around that when I was younger. I obviously had friends, but I was not in that contained environment six hours a day dealing with those social pressures. It was just me. If this person accepts you for wearing a dress, mm -hmm. be who you are, but tell them to be empowered about it and not mm -hmm. get that empowerment from so, somebody else. That's right. I feel like that's really kind of inconsiderate to say that someone would <laughs> take their life because what someone else says. To 
Many people have taken their own lives from what someone else says. It's called bullying. I swear this person is just... He doesn't understand logical thinking. Somebody that is important to somebody. I know have friends who their family does not use their correct pronouns and they transition and they live in the same household. This person struggles with depression and anxiety. Could you imagine living in an environment like that where you're no longer yeah, validated? Not, well, That's coming from your own parents. But, val yeah. but if you base your validation off of other people, this is a hard truth, but if your sole validation no, you definitely have to do it. Listen, I, I could give people, a shit whatever one thinks about me. I do what I want. But for everyone, that's not the case because everybody has different personalities. Well, the exception cannot be the rule. If you want to create a strong society that is empowered, that is productive, that doesn't give a crap about what other people think, then this is the harsh, real truth. You should not walk around being mentally ill or struggling because of the things that other people say about you. When you acknowledge, and it's a really hard thing to acknowledge, like I will not say that this is something easy, like he is saying, it is a hard truth. When you acknowledge that not everybody is going to like you in the world, and that you cannot please everybody, it's literally the most freeing thing. It's the reason why I'm able to do this show, knowing that there are many people that disagree with me, that there are people in my family that very much disagree with things that I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> if you live your life trying to please everybody, you are going to wear yourself out so fucking fast. People... <clears throat> excuse me. People have to realize that not everybody's going to be the same. You're not going to, like she said, you're not going to be able to please everybody. You have to learn to accept that, and that's not easy. There's always going to be somebody that's going to disagree with you and not like you or just argue with you until the world fucking ends. So the sooner you realize you can't please everybody, the sooner you are going to have a lot less stress in your life. That I have friends that I grew up with that don't like me anymore because of this. But I, I don't care because I've met incredible people who do. And I know that I'm being true to myself. And I'm being genuine and I'm empowered in what I'm saying. It's not an easy thing to do. But mentally, you will be better off. You will be stronger if you reach that point. And obviously, that is not the easiest thing to do. I remember being like a late teen, still acting in probably my like most awkward phase. And I just felt very out of place because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep acting. I felt like people didn't like me. I don't know. I was kind of questioning my political beliefs. Like it wasn't a fun time. But like reaffirming this and saying, no, I'm going to stay true to who I am. I don't care what other people think. It's so freeing. And it's up to you to decide to make that change, to change your mindset. Nobody else can do that for you. Right, but that doesn't make it any, that doesn't mean that but it's we still, should but be you're not to get listen, What you're not acknowledging others. though is that in that environment, it is not supported. I'm, I'm acknowledging that. I'm okay. just saying that we're saying that for some reason, it, it, they should look for that validation from somebody when else. When you love somebody, find it within. you have a family, you want them to but validate But you're focusing you. not on the individual, you're focusing on the people outside of that yeah, individual. Yeah, but the individual. focusing on empowering but, that individual. But part of you're, being a person is needing to be validated. You don't need to be validated ever in your life. From your no. family or your friends? I never. get my validation from within, That's and then cool. the Right, but we're, if we're talking about children, okay, if we're a talking, child. okay, I was an eight-year-old when I found out that I wasn't, I wasn't biologically male, right? I was eight when I found out that I wasn't the same as my brothers, okay? And so going through that... That's the problem with your parents. You got to take that up with them. I don't know what was going on or why you thought that you were a boy. That, I don't even know where this is going. That should not even be part of this argument that you at eight years old couldn't figure that out. And that your parents were so disconnected that they did not tell you. Through that process, I attempted suicide four times because my mother was like, well, you, you are a girl. When you're, when you're eight. Okay, well, that's her fault for not acknowledging that earlier on. And if an eight-year-old is attempting suicide, that's a much bigger deal. I would think that that is a bigger deal than just your mom saying, hey, you're a girl. I'm guessing that there's something mentally under there that we need to address that maybe you're not mentioning here. And you're 12 and you don't have anyone else that is in your space. When you don't have anyone else that lives in the same house as you to tell you you're okay. Where are you supposed to go? How are you supposed to garner your own self-validation if the people that are raising you don't validate who you are? As a father, you know, my duty is to raise my children the way I believe is right. And if my child... Also, before Brandon gets into this, validation is not the same as love and care. Very often, they should not be synonymous and they're very different things. This person is saying, oh, I need to be validated. You need to be validated. These people need to support you. 
you can still love somebody and want the best for them, but you have a different idea of what is best for them, but you're still loving them, you're still there. If this person's mother was abusive, that would be a totally different conversation, but they haven't said that she was abusive. It's just that she didn't affirm that she was a boy. I'm going to let it play out the way I believe it should be played out. And at 18 years old, you can do whatever you want to do. If you don't want to wear dresses, that's fine. I mean, just wearing it. If you, you want to dress like a boy, don't make you want to be a boy. Don't mean you have to be a boy. My mom was a tomboy and my mom had me and my brother and she's a woman, you know, and she lives like that. But you know, you may want to dress a little different. Maybe a boy want to do cheerleading or something like that. Right. But that don't make, that don't mean you need to transition to something else. So I want that to play out until my child is old enough to make that decision on their own. Yeah. Also, you have to teach your children to have balance because yeah. if you just want mommy and daddy to acquiesce to everything you want, oh, that's yeah. not reality. Yeah. You have to understand that mom and dad may not see me this way. They love me. Right. Yes. I see myself this way and I disagree with how they speak to me or how they're, but I love them as well. He is such an important voice. Like seriously, guys, if you have not listened to him, please do because he is so balanced yet firm in his belief which i think you saw that play out there where he does not compromise but he is kind and i think that that's just he's very very effective and when you see him debate other cops and debate like with the black lives matter movement oh god it is so good he's incredible this was a fascinating debate it actually was less spicy than i was expecting it to be i think that one person with like the big gauges in there i don't remember that was not gibby that was the other one i have no idea that one definitely seems a bit more agitated than everybody else it was definitely reaching but i would be interested to know how she they walked away feeling after that because that was a very productive conversation in my opinion and i love that so i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you saw some new viewpoints i love doing these videos have a great day guys i know this ran, video ran, ran very long because i had a lot to say but uh, i hope you all enjoyed that let me know what you all think in the comments below. I, I would be very interested to hear uh, what you all thought of all those questions, of those three questions that uh, they were given. If there's any other videos you'd like to see me react to, please make sure to comment them down below. Also go check out all my uh, socials, my uh, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, and Discord. The links to them are in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.